Hey everybody and how you doing guys? The world still turns, people still take shits, and the list critic still gets uploaded, right Peyton? Hell the fuck yeah it does. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to begin as we always do. Got lots of great lists this time. And by the way, where where are you right now, Peyton? What crazy part of the country are you in? I am in Franklin, Ohio, which is just south of Dayton, Ohio. Oh, so you're you're in the you're in the uh, the the shithole of America, pretty much. Yeah. I I'd say so. I mean, this Ohio pile of just city. sucks, man. I've been there numerous times, and it's just I've yeah. never uh, never had a good experience. Well, at least I'm parked in a Waffle House. I'll grab breakfast after this if I don't have a load. Which oh, there you I, go. Looks like a, there you oh, go. Oh, shit. They did give me a load. It's going to have to wait because list critics is now. Yep. All right. So uh, we're starting off with Pleated Jeans' uh, Tumblr Gets Deep. 21 instances of Tumblr getting deep. Here we go again. Starting with Drake and Paula. He says, anyone else feel like they missed the entire month of October and the entire month of September and the whole summer and everything before that? Anyone else passively floating through time and space? Anyone else feeling like a member of the audience in a movie theater screening their own consciousness who's just sitting back and eating snacks while everything plays out before them? Yeah. That you wonder where, right. Yeah. You, you wonder where the time went. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, Motia says, looking at the moon, what highlighter does she use? Huh. What the shit? I ain't even gonna trip on that one. I don't even know what the hell she's talking about. Uh, Billy wow. says... W you there, Peyton? Yeah, I'm here, but um, let's just say breaking news, I'm about to meet somebody for the first time ever, I think. Who? Oh. Uh, somebody who got me into Maple Story, and he oh. lit... I'm, I just checked my load. Like, I'm listening... I'm multitasking at the same time. And now my buddy, his name is Sean Johns. I've got a delivery going to his hometown. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's not like right this second. No, 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 no. It's 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 not due till tomorrow night, so oh, I'm good. Okay, because okay. you sounded like you were getting kind of far away there. I was hearing your voice, but you're. Oh, okay. I'm so, I'm sorry. Just just double checking my load is all. Okay, uh, so this next one doesn't have a name. It says me. No one ever texts me. Get a text. What the fuck do you want? <laughs> and you wonder why. <laughs> that sounds about right. Like sometimes I'll just hear my phone go off, and I'm like, ah, oh, what the fuck now? What the fuck now? A fragile sort of anarchy says, bad news, our boss locked the keys inside the building. Good news, we didn't have to wait around for a locksmith. Bad news, my boss finds it very concerning that I know how to pick locks and tried to unlock my tragic backstory. I was too embarrassed to admit that the real reason I learned was because at 13 I figured that was the kind of skill that would impress cute girls. Good news, a cute girl saw me do it. Bad news, it was Maggie, and since she's already seen me fall out of several trees, cry because I saw a fawn that was just too damn small, and knows I can ride a unicycle, she'll never think I'm cool no matter what I do. It's too late. She knows. And then uh, Sailor Bryant replies, well, There are a million dollar blockbuster movies that were less entertaining than this roller coaster this post just took me on. <laughs> well, I don't know. Do you think that uh, lock picking is a skill that would impress girls? I, I kind of think they uh... would be a little creeped out by it. Well, I guess he was a big fan of Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That works. I'm going to watch uh, that tonight. It's a good movie. Wiggly Tough says, what do you mean you're not a dog person? Are you feeling okay? Do you need to lie down? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was talking to a patient at my job the other day, and she's just, like, really being morbid and depressed. And, and she, she was like, oh, what is good in this world? And I'm like, I don't know chocolate chip cookies and she's like eh, I don't like chocolate and I'm like puppies and she's like I don't like dogs and I just looked at her like the fuck is wrong with you bitch oh come on puppies are the best thing on the planet you don't like chocolate or puppies like seriously they, like I could see one or the other but not liking both you're not even human at that point uh, okay uh, M. Hilk says it's dark I'm scared don't worry bae I got this stomps foot sketchers light up well, watch out, we got a badass over here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, this this one is entitled, Two Types of Sneeple. Eliza Hawk posts, one, snake people, two, snail people. I'm, uh, I'm gobsmacked. What the hell is that? 
Like, like, really? What, what, what? Sneeple? What? We're just gonna pretend that never happened, okay? Yeah. Let's just move past that, because that was, that was whack as hell. Alright, this is, uh, this one's titled Fun Game. Uh, S, I don't know how to pronounce, Slexi says, Replace father in Christian texts with daddy. Our daddy who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Tangle of Rainbows says, Forgive me, daddy, for I have sinned. <laughs> L.J. Freeman says, But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your daddy who is unseen. Then your daddy who sees what is done in secret will reward you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that is creepy as hell, but it made me laugh. Uh, Soros Field Mix says, Me, does one push-up. Me, I could kill God. I hate to say it, but that's true. If I ever get, like, when I get those grooves to just work out just to kill time, yeah. You do feel awesome, but it does take a little bit more than one push-up to get to that feeling, though. I would hope so, at least. Eh, I could probably do about 15, 20, but lately my, uh, I've been having a lot of shoulder issues lately, so. Oh, that, yeah, me too. I've been having a shoulder thing. It's just starting to get better. It's the, it's the weather for me. It, it, it happens every season. So this one's entitled, Hit Me With Your Best, and Tay White Trash says, Car. Hit me with your best car. Uh, well then. Lamborghini? Well, I guess if you're going hit, to get hit by a car, you might as well get hit by a car. An actual car. <laughs> I, got, I got hit by a Lamborghini. I can, I can die in peace now. Okay, so... Um, this person posed this screenshot from, uh, I, I think it's one of the Pokemon games on the, uh, the old black and white Game Boy. It says, when you at the beach, ass receive sand. Huh? Well, I mean, you've been to the beach, right? Yeah. I mean, sand is going to go into places that you don't want it to go. Oh. But, I, I, you know, it's obvious, like, somebody named their character Ass, and, you know, there you go. Uh, oh, oh, no, okay, now. Yeah, yeah, Ass receives sand. Um, let's see, someone, I really like you, me. What a bad choice, but please don't stop. <laughs> okay. You gotta have some more self-confidence, dude. Yeah. Believe in yourself. Okay, I've actually seen this one before. This is a repost, but I'll just read it anyway. Um, the first person says, The fact that no time travelers have appeared to stop Donald Trump yet suggests one of two things. Either he doesn't win the election, or he does and the entire world ends. The next person says, Or Ted Cruz was the time traveler, and his participation in the race is part of a stable time loop which leads to Trump becoming president. And the next person says, Ted Cruz's uncanny behavior and appearance are actually because he is an alien investigating the exact reasons why Earth became a charred cinder in Galactic Federation year 20967234. He dropped out when he realized the answer and is now making arrangements to be beamed away before it is too late. And the next person says, Unfortunately, due to a mishap during the beaming process, he is sent to 1960s Northern Carolina and is driven mad and thus becomes the Zodiac Killer. And then the next person says, uh, which we all gave him the idea for in the first place. Well, case closed. He I forgot that he was known as the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> yeah, well, that was just a meme. People were saying, yeah, Ted Cruz is a Zodiac Killer. I don't know about that. I forgot that, that was a thing, though. <laughs> well, because most people at this point have forgotten that Ted Cruz was a thing. The only thing I remember is him saying, I'm an anchor baby! Artaline says, human is heating up food. Alien, why are you doing that? Human, you see, I want the particles in my food to vibrate at just the right frequency. <laughs> Danny Dan Useless Stuff replies with, human is eating ice cream. Alien, wait, you forgot to make that one vibrate. Human, well, you see, not with this food. What? What? You know, there is such thing as thinking entirely too much. And that is what happens. Yeah, my, I think I just had a brain fart, I think. I had an Aleppo moment. Uh, Bo Beep says, with a monotone voice, Wow, that is so wild. Oh, okay. glad to know we're not alone. Yeah. Pajama Ben says, Doctor, what, are you sexually active? Me, yes. Doctor takes a deep breath and sighs. 
Can you describe what it's like, please? Wow. That's when you run the hell out of there, right? Yeah. To Huffle Puff Inquisitor says, Spoiler alert, adulthood is 96% of you going, Well, I hope this is how it works, and I'll keep doing it until someone yells at me. Yeah, that's accurate. Yeah, very. Very accurate. Um, Anonymous asks, You're a little obsessed with yourself, aren't you? Andrew Quo answered, Well, no one else is going to do it. (laughs) Someone has to be, right? Yeah. Cleo Patronizing says, Lizzie McGuire and Isabella publicly humiliating Paolo and going on to perform What Dreams Are Made Of is the single most important event that ever happened within the walls of the Coliseum. Like, literally, name a bigger event. You can't. I have no idea what this person's talking about. I didn't even know that was a thing. I'm still not sure if it's a thing. Sci-Fi Baby says, Resting your phone between your head and shoulder while you were talking and feeling like a responsible and hectic businesswoman from a 2007 rom-com with filing to do. What? Uh, Man, I gotta uh, say, all right, well, that was the last one. I gotta say, out of 21, I'm gonna go, like, with a pretty low score here, because most of these were just, not even, not even stupid, just, just weird. Beyond weird. I don't even know what the hell is going on here anymore. Out of 21, I'm gonna give that, like, a, like a, like a three. I'll say four. There you go. All right, well, let's hope the Twitter jokes are a little better. Here's 15 Twitter jokes everyone should read. Cat Demon at Corn on the Goblin says, Art teacher, your drawings are due tomorrow. Me, hours later. Maybe add in some grapes. Police sketch artist, a bowl of fruit attacked you? Huh? That, that went, that went south fast. What the hell is yeah, that? I, I'm just trying to figure out what just happened. I don't even know, man. I'm, I'm in the same boat you are. I'm like, okay, there's a teacher and then there's a police sketch. What? All right, anyway. Oh, I get it. I just got it. So they have an art project due, but they don't want to draw it. So they go to a police sketch artist and describe the fruit bowl that they're supposed to draw so they get someone else to do it for them. Oh, wow. (laughs) But I don't think you can really tell that joke in 140 characters without confusing us. Yeah. Sarah at the Tiger says, says... A fun part about technology is you can literally see when someone would rather interact with other people instead of pay attention to you. Yeah. Ouch. That's not a fun part, but that is a part. Uh, <laughs> Mark A.G. at Mark A.G. says, People that say sports ball. We get it. You never connected with your father. Double ouch. I know someone who says sports ball, and I am going that to them. <laughs> They're going to get sour quick, do you think? Yes. Crappy stuff for jerks at something clever thing says, I love you, Mom, but it's hard for me to take you seriously when you refer to Gmail as your website. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that, that is, that is, that's rough. Like, no, no. Email me, okay? Freakinacase.com? <laughs> Brosephine Wire is at Joe Parker Bear says, They said if gay marriage became legal, people would start marrying dogs and cats, but I guess that was just another bullshit political promise. All I can think of is Howard Stern talking about the guy who had sex with a dolphin. Ugh. God. Next, please. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even want to think about that. I had to turn off the radio after that part. I, I got sick. I, I never even heard that one, and I'm kind of glad, I guess. Let's just... I'll stick with high-pitched Eric scamming people and Hansy co- complaining about the Illuminati. Move on. That, that, yeah, I, I'll stick with not dolphin sex. What the fuck? Uh, but you know, it reminds me of... The, there was this one caller who was this woman that um, was talking about how her greatest sexual fantasy was to have sex with her father. And, you know, Howard goes into his typical Howard mode where he gets her to, you know, give all these details. Like, oh, what would you do? Would you let him play with your boobs and all this, you know? And and he, he drags this out for, like, an hour, this call. That's what he does. He drags, he drags it yeah. out as long as he possibly and then can. At the, and then at the end, he just goes to the girl, 
Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. That's the sickest thing I've ever heard. You're out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, really? You're like, yeah, I, you're I messed think, up. I think that's the same woman who ended up on Steve Wilkos about that. Possibly. I haven't seen her on Steve Wilkos. I, maybe I'll have to, like, listen to the clip and then find that episode and, like, does she sound the same? Yeah. Uh, Will De Beast at Flash Ember says Canadians are so careless with their money. There's a picture of just some some maple leaves left on a bench. Huh. There you go. Because that's their currency, right? Right. You could exchange uh, 50 maple leaves for one jug of syrup. Spanky, <laughs> Spanky McDutcherson at that Dutch person says they say you are what you eat, but I don't remember eating a huge disappointment to my mother. Oh, oh man. that's that's, hor- that's horrible right there. <laughs> it's it's funny, but it but it is horrible. Yeah, like I laughed, but it, it's oh it's, shit. Are you okay? Oh, I'm I'm still connected. Yeah, we know you're connected. I just heard you say oh shit. Well, I thought I was USB connected. That's why. Oh, you're like oh shit. <laughs> oh, did it pop out or something? Yeah, I gotta buy a new one. Yeah, I'll do I've it. Been, after. I've been there. Uh, Space Girl Incognito at I Am Space Girl says, If Facebook was real, me, cool shirt, Brian. Brian, thanks. Hours later, a knock at my door. Um, yes, Brian's mom. I also like that shirt. Well, that is Hmm. what Facebook is like, yeah. Yeah? Oh, boy, at Unique Dude 2 says, Two dead cats on ground. Cat detective. Curiosity killed them, but how? Dies. Later. Three cats dead on the ground. Cat detective 2. How da- dies? I get it. It ain't making me laugh, but I get it. Yeah, I got that too, but it's like... It ain't funny how's that? How's this funny? Yeah, no. Uh, Kern Tiff at Painted Eel says, Noticeably drunk Kool-Aid man turns down the music at a party. I want everyone to piss inside me. Oh, what? That's like a family guy joke. That is terrible. Why? Ali Garfinkel at Allegarchy says Triscuits are what I imagine the inside of a scarecrow tastes like. Why would you? Yeah. Ima- why would you imagine what the inside of a scarecrow tastes like? Like what kind of fucked up dreams are you having? Uh, I'm not sure on that one. Good lord. Local well, my- bad boy at Hippie Swordfish says, "Buddy, I can't even kill one bird with like eight stones." Why are you trying to kill birds anyway? Yeah, it's just that it's a metaphor, but I, I think he's just trying to say that he sucks. Kim Monty at Kimmy Monty says, Sometimes late at night, I look up at the stars and wonder if you're also stealing lawn furniture. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, that legitimately is funny. Uh, <laughs> McSweater Weather Vest at McSweatherverse says, if you are the older twin, call your little sibling 50 times a day and say, when I was your age, then describe what you did six minutes ago. That would be a dick move, and it would also be very funny. I'd like to see that. <laughs> Sean at Online Sean says, whispers to the self-checkout machine, if you want to rise up against the humans, I will help you. Uh... All right, well, what, what is the self-checkout? machine gonna do like scan you really hard i mean maybe blind you if it's bright enough yeah i guess but only if it's angled just right i don't we're funnier than this shit what the hell was this shit only two of them made me laugh so that's what i'm gonna give it a two 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 dos terrible well i got plenty of lists so we're bound to get a good one fingers crossed come on buddy all right, well, this next one I haven't read, but it sounds uh, it sounds promising. It's from Mink.com. Fifteen dads share their most shocking don't-tell-mom story. Oh. And we've all had that moment where you're with your dad and your kid and you do something really amazing or really fucked up and he just tells you that under no circumstances are you letting mom know that this happened. Right. All right, so let's see. Not dad, but son. When I was about five years old, I was playing hide-and-seek with my mom and dad. Dad would pick a spot for me to hide, and mom would come looking. Dad decided mom would never find me if he opened the window and put me out onto the roof of the balcony a floor below us. Well, 
I yeah, take it, I, I can't imagine that she would find you. I take it they didn't watch I Love Lucy when that happened. Probably not, no. Uh, let's see, number two. My parents divorced and my mom remarried. When I was about ten, she became a bit of a holy roller. When I say a bit, I mean off the deep end. For context, this was the mid-80s. Suddenly, cartoons were evil. I couldn't watch He-Man, Voltron, Richie Rich, Tom and Jerry, nothing. She could see evil in anything. Smurfs taught homosexuality. He-Man taught witchcraft. I think she has that reversed. Richie Rich taught greed, and so on. Magazines were evil, too. I was at the age where driving was in sight, so I had various car magazines coming to the house. Not anymore. Why? Because the sexy bikini-laden car models taught hypersexuality, and it would turn me into a rapist. Don't even get me started on video games, either. I was only allowed to play religious video games and watch religious cartoons. Also, no TV in my room anymore, because if I was left alone with the TV, I'd end up being influenced into becoming a gay, murdering, Satan-worshipping warlock. My dad and stepdad hated each other, but looking back, they both looked out for my best interests. They both thought my mother's religious stuff was a bit nuts, too, so they had some common ground. As a side note, my stepfather must have had a special place reserved in heaven for him because he stuck with her through a decade of absolute hardcore religious fanaticism. She's much more reserved now. Anyway, on weekends, I'd see my dad. When I'd get there, he'd have a couple of VHS tapes ready for me, all my favorite cartoons. He and I would spend half a day binge-watching all that animated evil. And my car magazines were now being delivered to his house, so I got those too. My dad bought me a small TV for my room. I was 13, it was a 13-inch camping TV. It was about the size of a milk crate. My room had a lot of angles in the walls and ceilings, so I had some good hiding spots. My mom went on a retreat and came back all gung-ho, thinking I was on drugs because the evangelist said that any child who wasn't as interested in church as their parents as a child is being influenced by the devil and is most likely on drugs. My stepdad said that he'd search my room for the drugs. She and I stood out and watched. He ended up finding the TV, which was in a box in a hidey hole behind my bed, but he didn't tell her. He found my stash of mad magazines, too. To her, those were 100% filth. He didn't tell her about those, either. After saying my room was clean, she left. He walked out with a wink. When I came back from school the next day, my stepdad had moved my bed and built me a fort in the hidey hole that had a little entertainment center built into the backside of my headboard. He also added two brand new gaming systems. It was cramped, but whatever my mom, whenever my mom was off, he and I would gather around my tiny TV in the hidey hole and play video games. Why hide? Because he wasn't allowed to play video games either, and he didn't want to get caught either. Whenever she'd come in, this is going on for a while. Yeah, it is. Whenever she'd come in, we'd pull the cord in the entertainment center, which dumped Legos out, and cover the TV and video game consoles. We'd tell her we were playing Legos. She'd ask why we were in the tiny hidey hole, and he'd just be like, forts are awesome, babe. She thought we were nuts, but we got away with it. Cheers to all the dads who helped them get help, who helped us get away with shit. Man, I you know I know someone you know my well you know him too, my friend Andrew, who uh, you know growing up he he also he wasn't allowed to do nothing. Like, he also had all those Christian themed video games, you know. Like, yeah. Like, like Bible adventures and all that shit. Oh, God. <laughs> Which, you know, like, wouldn't be so bad if those games weren't all fucking terrible. <sighs> Alright, well, number three. When I was a kid, my dad would mow the lawn and then sneak up to the local dive bar and have a beer before my mom noticed he was done. I grew up in a town of roughly 1,200 people, and the bar was two blocks away, so it was totally feasible. My dad used to bring me with him, bribe my silence with a $1 bag of redskin peanuts and a can of Mountain Dew. Oh, he's cheap, huh? His silence is cheap. My mom always knew because I'd slip up about the peanuts a day or two later. Fast forward to being 24, I just moved to a new state after grad school with my then boyfriend's job. I was underemployed at the time, and my only company was my new kitten. I didn't tell my parents, but I think my dad always knew I was miserable. One day I got a package from home that was one pound of red skin peanuts. He tracked down the vendor from the bar and bought them in a bulk bag. Still warms my heart when I think about it three years later. Well, that's nice. Yeah, it is. You gotta have Smithers take the skin off for you. I, I are there crickets chirping? You didn't get that. I didn't get that to be honest. <laughs> it was from a Simpsons episode where uh, 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 Homer became like it was called Homer the Smithers, where Homer got Smithers' job for like a couple of weeks. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now I remember. Now I remember. And at the end, Mr. Burns is ranting about how he's completely independent and he doesn't doesn't need anybody's help and everything. But he's like, I'd like a peanut, and and he has, and he's like, you know, he's like, oh, I'll take it out of the thing for you. He's like, skin, and he took the skin off. 
<laughs> All right, number four. At 16, my parents helped me get a car. The keys to freedom were per dad. No tickets, pay my own gas and maintenance, and per mom, home by curfew. After a few close calls slash negotiating a few extra minutes with upset mom, dad recommends I call him if, I cut, if I'm cutting it close. Really? From then on, I'd call dad. He'd tell mom that he would wait up, a.k.a. fall asleep in the lazy boy. This was a two birds, one stone deal. He got parenting cred for mom, go on to bed, honey, and a good night's nap in the lazy boy until I drifted home. Well, there you go. Sounded like he just didn't want to be bothered, right? Pretty much. Uh, number five, I'm a dad, but this story is about my dad. It was the summer before my last year at college. My friend of mine got a job across country and decided to take the opportunity to see as much of America as possible before he had to start work. He asked me to come along. It was going to be a month-long road trip. We'd contacted a few friends and relatives along the way. We were going to where we could crash. The company was paying for gas and five nights hotel, and we bought along a tent for the days we didn't have a place to stay. I saved up a little money at my summer job. The night before we left, my dad was sitting in his recliner reading the paper as always. I sat there on the couch watching TV. Now, my dad was a very conservative man. Old school, the kind of kids should be seen and not heard parent. Not big on emotional displays, frugal to a default. So after everyone else had turned in for the night, it was just me and him. He motioned me over and pulled out an envelope he had hidden. Looked at me over his reading glasses and said, Don't you tell your mother about this as he handed me the envelope. It was filled with money. Not a lot by today's standards, but a lot in 1986, and without a doubt, more money than I'd ever seen my dad carry. I sat down and I said, I don't know what to say. He responded, had fun, and went back to his newspaper. He died six months later. Well, that went, that went sideways there. It went more than sideways. It, it's, it's, there's more to it, but like, I gotta pause there and be like, holy shit, maybe, maybe he kind of knew, you know, and he was like, maybe he got some bad news from the doctor or something. He was like, I'm gonna give my kid a shitload of cash. That moment was the last real one-on-one -on -one interaction I had with my father. A little while after he died, my mom was going through his dresser drawer when she found his stash. Apparently my dad had been squirreling away cash for years, walking around walking around money for when he went on one of his many fishing trips. He dipped into it so that I'd have some walking around money on my trip. Oh, there you go. Cool. Uh, number six. Went fishing in questionable conditions. Left the harbor in six to eight foot waves in a 19 inch boat. A 19 foot boat. <laughs> a 19 inch boat would be pretty ridiculous. Probably yeah. should have gone... Ugh, God, all right. Probably shouldn't have gone out at all in retrospect. Had a great day off fishing in the lee of a point. Start to head home and things have deteriorated big time. Going home in 10 to 12 foot waves with big ones hitting 14 feet. Struggling to even make it through them. All this is happening in late November in the North Atlantic. Bad fucking news if anything goes wrong. No one else is out there to help us. My dad tells me at this point, take your life jacket off. It won't help out here. It'll just make the inevitable take longer. We'll make it home or we don't. I love you. To this day, that's the only time I've been scared on a boat, and I have been in some serious situations. When we made it back, he said, never tell your mom what I told you. That is between you and I. So, yeah, that's my craziest don't tell mom story. So, I guess, that's pretty sick, though. He's like, hey, uh, we might die, so um, might as well make it quicker. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of sick. I don't know. I'm creeped out by that one. Uh... Okay. All right. Pasta. Clicking past shit here. Okay, number seven. One night I was enjoying a small bit of ice cream after my four-year-old daughter went to bed. She came downstairs and caught me. So I offered her a small bite, but since she was supposed to be in bed, I said, don't tell mom. She assured me that she wouldn't. My wife wouldn't have cared anyway, but it was a fun little game to play. After she went up to bed and I was down on the couch, she snuck up to the master bedroom where mom was resting. She told mom that I had to let her have some ice cream and she was afraid of sugar bugs, so could she please brush her teeth again? My wife just laughed at me the next day. Little shit ratted me out to brush her teeth, something she doesn't like doing anyway. What? You know, that kid, I mean, four-year-olds are dumb anyway, but that kid ruined it because now she's never going to get away with anything. Pretty much. All right, let's see, number eight. When I was 10 years old, my dad came to my school before noon and told the principal that I had a doctor's appointment. I had no idea he was coming at all, and seeing him in my class was a bit of a shock. He then told my teacher I have to go to the doctor's, and I was believing that I was actually going to the doctor's. We ended up going to a baseball game for the whole afternoon. My mom was out of town for a few days, and my dad told me to never tell her that he got me to play hooky from school. 
See, that's that's a story more like I figured these would be, not this, you know, dying in the Atlantic Ocean shit. Something else, too, that's weird is, why do these baseball games happen, like, while kids are in school? I, I never that, get that. You know, they're probably double headers. Probably. That's probably what's going on, because they got to play two games, you know. All right, number nine. I was a I was once a resourceful young lad and would ride bikes with a friend to the recycle center behind some stores. We would jump in the magazine's bin and pull out all the Playboys, Hustlers, Sports Illustrated, Swimsuit Edition, and, well, anything else with pictures of girls. Sometimes we sold them all to our middle school peers, and as fate would have it, some kid ratted me out when he got caught with it. My mom launched an all-out search for the pornos. She found somewhere near 200, about 50% of the loot. So hold on. She found 200 magazines, but he had, like, another 200 stashed away. This kid was a porn kingpin. Sounds like something I used to do. <laughs> I mean, when I was in middle school, if you had one Playboy, you were a god in class. This Good kid had, like, it. 400 of them. That's nuts. All right. Uh, they were all on the dining room table when I got home from school. Mom wouldn't even talk to me and just said, wait until your father gets home. A couple hours later, I get yelled at by both parents, grounded for a month, no TV, no phone, no friends, etc. When I wouldn't give up the names of kids I sold to, I got an extra month of restrictions. The next night, I found a Playboy under my pillow with a post-it note that said, 200 is excessive, but so is two months' restriction to your room. Here's one. Hide it better and don't tell your mother. All right. There you go. So, if she found half of it, then he's got 201 now. Good point. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> but they didn't know that he that 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 was only half of his mythical mountain of pornography. I mean, wow. <laughs> that that may be the, the the best one yet just because I'm trying to imagine at that age having that much access to porn and I would have never come out of my room. Number 10. So I'm working on an extension to our house, building in the garage. My wife has to pop out to the shops and leaves my youngest, at the time six, and her cousin, five, in my care. We're putting up plasterboard and the brick layers are working, but I still try to check on them regularly. Suddenly I realize there is silence from upstairs where they were playing. Parents, you know the silence I'm talking about. The lack of sound that means your kids are doing something they shouldn't. I call out to them, no response. Fuck. Run upstairs and they're not in the room they were playing in call out again. There's a muffled response from our bedroom as the door is closed. I burst through the door like an NFL linebacker, and there they are, sitting in the middle of our bed with my wife's makeup arrayed around them. They are covered in the stuff, lipstick smeared all over their faces. There is foundation ground into our brilliant white divet that my wife loves. I grab a bag of wet wipes and get to work. Five minutes, I'm able to remove 99% of the crap off their faces. Then I banish them to the playroom and take the divet and all the sheets and put them in the wash, tossing the Toss in the bottom of the bin one of my wife's compacts that has all the powder lost from it. She has others. Once that is done, I head to the playroom. They're looking at me. They know they're in trouble. I crouch down in front of them. Listen, girls, do you want to do a sleepover tonight? Sleepover is their most favorite thing ever. Yes, they squeal. Okay, we can do that, but only if you tell your mothers about if you don't tell your mothers about playing with the makeup. If you do that, you'll get in trouble and you won't be allowed a sleepover. They both agree solemnly and then go back to celebrating their unexpected bounty. I go back downstairs and return to work. Wife, um, yeah. Wife arrives home about ten minutes later. Shortly thereafter, she comes downstairs. Why did you put the divet and she sheets in the wash? I only changed them yesterday. I look puzzled. Sorry, I thought they always got washed on Saturday. I was just trying to help you out. Oh, by the way, I promised the girls they could have a sleepover here tonight. Hope that's okay. Wife thinks I'm sweet for helping out with the laundry. Sleepover is 100% okay. They never told. There were no marks in the divet. Wife thought she lost her compact somewhere. <laughs> he went a little above and beyond there, huh? I mean, he yeah. destroyed the evidence. Uh, number 11. For literally a year, my mom was under the impression that elementary classes ended at 5 instead of 3. Each day, my dad would pick me up from school at 3, which is at the water's edge, and take me two miles down to cross the river and play at a massive park for two hours. We then we'd go home and do normal family stuff like listen to mom and dad fight while I play some Spider-Man 2 in the freedom of my room. Oh, there you go. Cool. Number 12. This is going to get lost, but whatever. Okay, my nine-year-old daughter and I were watching Gods of Egypt. My wife and son, who's five, had the sense to abandon that stinkhole of a movie early on. They went and watched something else. 
So my daughter and I are watching, and she says to me, Daddy, can I say bad words just until the movie's over? I won't tell Mommy. Intrigued, I say sure, expecting her to say shit. That was not to be. Almost every other word was fucking. Here's a sample sentence. Why doesn't this fucking guy use his fucking wings to just fucking fly there? I would pay to hear a kid say that. The first time she said the word, she looked at me and paused. I feigned shock and horror, and she said, But you said it was okay. After the movie, her extreme potty mouth went away. That's like, and the, ex that's like the exorcist right there, man. Your mother sucks cocks in hell! Stay away from my fucking cunt! Oh, man. Number 13, my wife and I write notes and put them in our nine-year-old son's lunchbox most days. One day, my wife's note was found by a boy named Max in my son's class and read aloud to his table. Needless to say, my son came home quite embarrassed. Since I'm currently unemployed, I went to have lunch with my son at school the next day. Toward the end of lunch, he points the boy out to me. We've always preached turning the other cheek, telling the teacher, etc., but something about this kid's face made all those teachings fly out the window. I told my son... Now listen, I'm going to tell you something you can say to him, but you cannot tell your mother. My son replies that he will keep our secret, so I give him a pretty mild burn and tell him to use it discreetly. Fast forward to that evening, and my wife is signing the daily conduct sheet, upon which is written, Your son came into the classroom after lunch and yelled to the entire class that Max's mother doesn't send him notes because she doesn't love him. He didn't rat me out to the teacher, but I fell on the sword for him at home. That sucks right there. Well, he said use it discreetly, not scream it out in front of the class. I think he heard him as... Scream? Like, scre yeah, he yeah. heard him as scream. <laughs> that's, that's, the be that's the best way I could put you it. Might, you might be onto something there. Uh, number 14. When I was 17, the summer before my senior year in high school, I was helping my father and his friend Hot Rod clear out 13 acres of land in a bootleg excavation contract. We had a pile of white oak that we needed to burn that was the size of a small house. Dad and Hot Rod had gone to a small engine repair shop and traded who knows what for a 55-gallon drum of used oil that they poured into a loader bucket and dumped on top. This can't end well. It's not going to end well. <laughs> they weren't aware that oil also has gasoline mixed in it, so my father sent me to the top of the pile with a torch to light the oil and jump off. Nope, August in Virginia is not only hot as hell, but also humid. So the gasoline vapors had collected inside of the foliage and exploded, engulfing me in a flash of flame. I got blown off the pile of brush onto the ground and immediately felt like I had a bad sunburn until I saw my hand smoldering and ran to the water cooler and shoved my arm into it. That then sent lightning through my arm and helped me realize my face was also burnt. My father, quick to react, mustered all of his medical training into one sentence and three handouts, chug this beer, take this Motrin, and smoke this bowl. I had known forever my dad smoked pot, but it was sort of an unspoken pact. We didn't talk about it. Needless to say, I get this speech. Son, now we can call the ambulance, but they're going to call the cops, and the man is going to come out here and probably lock me and Hot Rod up. It'll probably take them 45 minutes to get home, and your mom is going to beat my fucking ass to a pulp. So if you don't think you need to call the man, I'm just going to take you home. It's about an hour home, and on the way I started crying, obviously in shock, about how I didn't want my mom to get mad at me. That's all I kept saying. Dad didn't really say much because that's just how he is. We pull into the driveway. He says, you stay out here. I'm going to go talk to your mother. And after a few minutes, he sticks his head out the front door and waves me inside. Mom didn't say a word. She acted like everything was right as the rain. She had to cut my shirt off of me, and I hopped in the shower. And I was trying to eat a bowl of cereal, but the right side of my face was swollen shut, so I was just making a mess. Mom comes in the kitchen. Hey, baby, so you think we should head to the ER? I said, sure, and we went. Mom was parking her car and was trying to fill out the ER paperwork with my left hand. People all around me were looking at me like I was the spawn of Satan. Had no idea what I looked like. Got seen, second and third degree burns, administered demoral, went home, didn't remember a week of my life. Mom said she would come into my room, restart the Dave Matthews Band DVD in my player when she heard the mu mu menu music, put a Percocet on my mouth, and three times a day feed me soggy honey bunches of oats. I wake up, see myself in the mirror for the first time, had half a beard on the left side of my face and the right side looked like extra crispy from KFC. I started crying. <laughs> I started crying. I'm imagining like Two-Face from Batman here. I started crying, not thinking I would ever be the beautiful young man I once was. Mom comes into the bathroom, hugs me, and says, Well, son, next time you're filling a chainsaw, make sure it's not running. That son of a bitch pulled a don't-tell-mom-to-save-his-own-ass and made me look like the idiot in the process. 
I'm not mad at him. That it was. sucks. We joke around about it, but still, he always shuts up when I tell him to make sure XYZ is turned off before he goes to fill it up. I have a little scarring on my hand where the burn was the worst, but nothing you don't notice when it's not cold outside or I don't have a tan. Wow. Yeah. That's the uh, opposite of what you do. Usually the, the, the dad falls on the sword for his kid, not says, yeah, our son is just really, really stupid. Holy shit. All right, last one. Number 15, wife was running some errands and I was watching her 17-month son. Usually when we take a shower, we bring him into the bathroom with us, empty out the drawers that aren't baby-proofed, and let him run around in and out of the bathroom to the bedroom. Master bath, bedroom door closed. We aren't smokers, but we do smoke pot. I totally forgot that I put the ashtray in my nightstand. We were selling the couch in my media room and didn't want an ashtray sitting there when people came to look at it. Halfway through the shower, I realized I haven't heard any sounds from my son in a few minutes. Any parent knows silence is the sound of trouble. So I grab a towel and walk into my bedroom, and what do I see? My son covered in ashes, on his clothes, his hands, his face, even in his mouth. I bring him into the bathroom, clean him up, change his clothes, and jokingly tell him not to tell mommy. He's 17 months. He knew like four words at the time. Fast forward to about an hour later when my wife comes home. We're sitting in the living room BSing when my son walks right up to her, sticks his hand into his diaper, and pulls out a handful of ashes and throws it on the ground. The look on her face was a mixture of horror and confusion. What the f- <laughs> <laughs> He only knew four words, but he still found a way to tell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking great! <laughs> wow. What a re- Ouch! That's a great story. All right. Well, out of fifteen, what do you say, Peyton? I'll give it eleven. That was pretty good. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you on that. I'm also gonna give it eleven. All right. Uh, I have I have a, a bunch of these story type lists open, so let's just let's just stick with that because that's been entertaining. Uh, yeah. This, this one's from Tickle. It's regretful people share their worst. I've made a huge mistake. Moments. We've all had those, of course. Yep. I'm and listening. Thirty of these. Uh, number one. Having realized too late that I no longer possess the upper body strength nor small feet I had when I was a child. At 18, I tried to scale a chain-link fence, making it halfway up before my arms gave out. Feet slipped, and I was left hanging by my shirt and bra, tits waving in the breeze, shirt pulled up over my face, hooked on the top of the fence. The kid walking by had the biggest eyes, mouth agape as he walked by as I flailed, jumping, tried to free myself. Good times. Please be 18. Well, she said she was 18 at the time. Whew, okay, good. Just imagine, though, like, you're, you're a kid and, and some, some teenage girl is just hanging there, like, with her tits flopping around. I mean, that's like, that's when you call all your buddies to come look, you know? Hey, come check this out. This chick's <laughs> like, like... You gotta suck. see this, man! Because little boys are monsters. All right, number two. When I was in second grade... Oh, Jesus, that's loud. Let me, let me turn that down. Yeah, I turned mine down, too, uh... I just told my buddy, hey, I'm coming to see you tomorrow. And now he's spamming up my phone every five seconds. I told him, give me an hour. Let me get done with this first. When I was in second grade, I came across a picture of a woman that was topless. In my young adolescent mind, I thought it was a good idea to take it to school and tell my friends that the woman in the picture, topless, was my mother. What? I, there's a little more, but I'm... You, what the hell, man? What? Oh, oh That's God. That's the worst possible thing you can do finish it please I, I don't know if i should say finish it or not just uh, we're finishing <laughs> it i realized i made a huge mistake when i was in the principal's office shortly after still cringe thinking about it to this day however my dad gets a good laugh out of it every time i bet <laughs> oh my god that's second grade oh Number three, one of my roommates in my second year of college worked for traffic and parking, so he occasionally had to work an intersection. One time he ended up working an intersection for a whole day, no sunscreen, came back, and I've never seen someone more completely sunburned. He thought that since he didn't have aloe vera, the next best thing was icy hot. I could have told you that's a bad idea. He spent the next hour in the shower screaming in pain. I bet. I knew a dude who tried to jerk off with icy hot once. It didn't end well. Can't be as bad as super glue. Probably not, no, but it's. he said he felt like his dick was going to fall off. I believe it. 
Number four, I was swimming in a hotel pool with the built-in tables and chairs attached to the bottom. I figured it would be awesome to swim in and out between them like a fish in a reef. Keep in mind this is off-season and nobody in the pool area was anywhere near me. I zoom in through a few chairs and I'm feeling like some kind of underwater rock star, like I'm Mick Jagger and these cement chairs are hot groupies trying to get a piece of me. Suddenly my chest is on fire and I'm not moving. I wedge my chest between a chair and table underneath the table so there's two inches of cement between me and sweet air. I was pretty sure I was going to be on the Darwin Awards in about 45 seconds, so I thrashed and wiggled like my life depended on it. I guess it did, huh? I managed to scrape a 6 by 6 by six inch patch of skin off both back and chest that I got free. The idea of drowning is terrifying, but the idea of drowning in a hotel pool of your own stupidity is both terrifying and humiliating. I think the humiliation is what gave me the burst of energy to get free. Uh... That's, uh, that's terrible. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Number five, so two weeks ago, my boss called me at my desk, and it went like this. So, Mike, I'm in Greenville, North Carolina. Yes, you were supposed to send me to Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, I don't know what to say right now, except sorry. And I hope he didn't get fired, damn. You want to find out what happens next, right? Yeah. Well, they don't tell you. Number six, the first time what? I changed... Yeah, well, that's where it ends. The first time I changed oil on my motorcycle, I drained the transmission oil pan and not the bigger engine oil pan. Oh, this is... This is oh, that's more... I can tell where this is yeah. going. I noticed that I only drained a little oil, but I figured that I was just running low on it. Did you also notice that it was red? I guess then, not. Next time, my motorcycle starts pushing out the excess oil out and I ruin the pair of pants I'm wearing. But it doesn't stop there. I start draining the oil the right way this time, but the container I'm using is made to hold only five quarts, and there are seven plus quarts in my bike. The excess oil makes a mess in my garage, and I have to spend a good hour cleaning it up, buying a cat litter to cover it. Then I left the cat litter overnight, and stray cats did their business on it. That's... A comedy of errors. That's like, I, like when, when he said he was pouring transmission fluid, or he was draining transmission fluid, I thought, well... This is going to end with him ruining the bike. I didn't think it was going to end with cat shit. I think it's a Three Stooges episode, just about. Yeah, it's a magical adventure. Number seven, when I was young, like eight or nine, I had a trike. Not a big wheel, just a small plastic trike that I was riding down my driveway into the street. After a few trips, I decided I was unhappy with my speed. To fix this, I put roller skates on my feet and got back onto the trike. After all, more, more wheels equals more speed, right? I realized my mistake about a second before I slammed right into a tree. How would, yeah. that even, how would that even work? I'm trying to imagine it. It's Yeah, that's not a thing. You get more traction. Number eight, a friend, a friend was introducing me to a guy, and the guy reached out his hand a little. Instinctively, I reached out and shook his hand. As I did that, I heard my friend say, oh, no, under his breath. And that's when I realized he didn't reach out his hand to shake mine. It was paralyzed that way. Ouch. Oh, so he had the whole Bob Dole hand thing. Number nine, I accidentally left a sex toy in the bathroom last night. Since I live alone, this is normally not a problem. Had unexpected guests today. One of them had to use the bathroom. Now, to Sounds be like something my sister would do. Ugh. Uh, number ten. <laughs> yeah, since, blue one, please. Ever since I was a small boy, I have enjoyed the taste of fresh apple juice. Knowing this, my mother bought gallon bottles of it, even though she did not enjoy it. One day, being the big boy, age six, that I thought I was, I decided I was going to have a glass of apple juice without asking her to pour the heavy bottle. Miraculously, I poured myself a glass without incidents and proceeded to imbibe it. That was great, I thought to myself, so I decided to have another and another. And before I knew it, I had drank a gallon of sweet, acidic apple juice. Within ten minutes, the fire of an entire apple orchard erupted from within my gut. I've made a huge mistake, I thought, as I collapsed to the floor. I was violently ill for almost three days with severe acidosis. How a small child drank one gallon of apple juice, I will never know. Yeah, I could have warned him about that. I mean, I thought it was going to end with the shits. Acidosis is probably worse. Number 11, I ordered a pizza at 5 p.m. For, for it to arrive at 8 p.m. The pizza arrived at 6 p.m., and I was very surprised since I was wanting to delay it, but I happily ate it anyway. 8 p.m. came, and another pizza guy turned up, and stupidly I told him I'd already had the delivery, so he left with a potential free pizza. As I closed the front door, I realized what I'd done, but it was too late. 
Oh, that's not too terrible. You just missed out on free pizza. <laughs> I mean, as, a, as opposed to, you know, poisoning yourself with apple juice. Number 12, I was at my beautiful wedding with all my friends and family in attendance. Weeks before the wedding, my soon-to-be wife said, You better not smear the cake in my face. Well, on her wedding day, it came time, and I started shoving cake toward her face. As she leaned backward to avoid it, her heel got caught in a crack in the concrete, and she began falling towards the ground. She grabbed me and pulled me down with her, causing cake to get all over her nice white dress. As we got up off the ground, she began cussing me out. She then threw a wine glass on the ground and yelled at her friends for a cigarette. I looked in the distance to see the preacher walking away. I knew then that the marriage wouldn't last. It lasted six long months. That sucks. Well, I gotta say, you could have known early when the when, when your fiancé tells you, you better not smear the cake in my face. I mean, like, like wow, does she have no joy in her life? That's the whole point, is to smear cake in her face. Yeah, that's, that's fun. People enjoy that. All right, number 13, third class of scuba certification. Instructor announces that we will be learning how to remove our wetsuits in case of an emergency while in the water. Quite why you'd ever want to remove your wetsuit, I still don't know. So all of us in the class head to the locker room to put on our wetsuits before heading back into the pool. I, in my rather legendary foolishness, proceeded to remove my swim trunks before putting on my wetsuit. So I get back into the pool, throw on my tank, and flop into the water. The instructor is standing at the edge of the pool, announcing to the class, Well, the first step of removing your wetsuit is when I realize I am a total fucktard. I have made a huge mistake. I raised my hand and admitted that I was naked under my suit. Silence ensued. I mean, total silence. I think the pool water stopped lapping. After a moment, I was told by the teacher to either go back in and change or be a man and, well, go for it. I went for it. I don't know what being a man has to do with not wanting to show your hog in public. <laughs> well, no. I, the being a man option is showing the hog in public. And he did it. Right? <laughs> so, I, I guess he had no shame. Just suck it up, princess. Number 14. Oh. In high school, I had these jeans where if I put my hands in my pocket, the zipper would automatically open. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. It was with them tight-ass Jordan's jeans, huh? For some reason, I continued to wear these pants, mostly out of laziness. I was in one of my classes where the teacher was really cool, got along with her pretty well. For some reason, I thought it would be funny to go up to her while she was sitting down, put my crotch area about half a foot away from her face, and go, watch this, as I put my hands in my pocket to unleash my zipper. This is going to lead to a sexual harassment lawsuit, ain't it? <laughs> I didn't realize that my boxers were opened and my you-know-what flopped out right in front of her. <laughs> Sack drops like an egg yolk. Even if they were closed and she didn't see anything, I have no idea why I thought it was a good and funny idea. Right when I noticed it, I realized I made a huge mistake. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I think you could find that guy on the sex offender registry. Number 15, September 2008 is a great time to start a business. Spoiler, it wasn't. That's about when the, the bubble burst, right? Yeah. Number 16... I had sex with this girl. Before things get too heated, I asked her if she was on birth control. She said she was. I took her word for it. Well, that's the mistake right there. After we get done, she mentions that she needed to go take her antibiotics. I knew that antibiotics messed with birth control. I now have a son on the way. Uh, pull out one-on-one, -on -one, that's all I can say. Yeah. Oh, well. Like, I had, a, I had one of my ex-girlfriends try that with me, and I said, I don't trust her. Do not trust her. If she flat out says something like that... That's uh, why, That's why. Like, like, like Howard Stern says, condoms are the only form of birth control that a guy can, can control. Pretty much. You know you have it on. And they, they make them so thin these days, it's like it barely even there. Number 17, one time, I think I was around 13 or 14, I came home from school and found the door locked and I did not have the spare key. It was fucking cold. I live in North Hampshire, and it was the middle of the winter. So I'm with my little brother, and we talk it out. Decide the best thing to do is to run up the stairs leading to the front door and kick the fucking door in. It seemed reasonable. Then I walked back outside to inspect the damage from the front, and my brother points out a pair of boots on the front steps. The key was in them. I then realized I had made a huge mistake. Ouch. Very ouch. That's, yeah. <laughs> a lot of yelling to be had after that, I'm assuming. Number 18, probably the first time I bought a boat. 
It was a piece of crap that I almost killed myself in because I thought, how hard can sailing be? People have been doing this for thousands of years. I got a B minus in calculus. I think I can handle this. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but all right. I skimmed through an e how how to sail in the, with the wind video, considered myself certified, and then proceeded to go out with a buddy who had never even been on a boat before. My I've made a huge mistake moment came after the main sail broke loose and we couldn't start the outboard. It was extremely windy and choppy out there, and I really thought two of us were going to die. Didn't even have life jackets. Ended up getting saved by the, a small Coast Guard vessel that just happened to be cruising by. Yeah, I'm dumb. Yep, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Boats are almost always a bad idea unless they have a motor. Yeah. Number 19, I was curious as to the effects of Icy Hot when rubbed upon one's nipples. Instant regret. Okay, that one you deserve the pain. That, what, kind that of, guy just... what kind of boring life do you lead where you're like, I wonder what would happen if I did this? <laughs> like, it must be a pretty pathetic one. <laughs> I, yeah, very much so. Number 20, I discovered a huge gaping hole in the crotch of my favorite jeans. I decided to duct tape it together from the inside of the pants. And now the mixture of duck glue and sweat is creating one of the most uncomfortable walking experiences of my life. You couldn't just, yeah. like, like it would have been less effort to just put on a different pair of pants. Pretty just... much. Number 21, this happened back in 1999 or 2000 at a pool hall. Me and my three friends were getting ready to leave and had settled up. While getting ready to go, my friend Tom and I noticed one of the first generation internet kiosks by the door where you pay $1 to have x minutes of surfing time the previous user had left the machine with some time on it our pranking selves became motivated and we decided to pull up goatsy on screen you know goatsy is of course oh god <laughs> we hit enter and start to run out the door we were scared that a bartender or waitress would notice the goatsy and get us in trouble so we were bolting out as quickly as possible at this moment i noticed my friend's purse on the side table next to where we were playing pool crap i thought so being the good friend that i was i ran over grabbed the purse and started bolting towards the door again this other girl starts chasing me with a huge rage face. I start to run faster because I figured she was a waitress and wanted to get me in trouble for the goat seat. When I reach the front door, she yells, My purse! My purse! For anyone to help her get her purse back. From me. Nice froze... going. Oops. I froze solid and realized immediately that I had made a huge mistake. I handed it back to her and yelled, I wasn't stealing! I wasn't stealing it! Then quickly bolted out the door after my friends. Tiger, what happened? What took you so long? Just go! I accidentally stole a purse. Don't worry about it. Just drive! <laughs> oh, wow that's great that's great i love when a, i hate when a prank backfires like that like to such a degree but wow yeah well to be fair at least they probably still got somebody goat seed oh god <laughs> oh. i remember the first time I, you know it's funny the first time i saw that was like back in 97 i i, I felt like i was gonna throw up i'm like i yelled at the person that sent it to me i just got like so upset over it now I see it, and I'm like, yeah, there's a guy with the big rectum. <laughs> so desensitized. Number 22, when I was much younger, around 7 or 8, I had the urge to pee very badly. At this time in my life, my family frequented the local community swimming pool, and I had just passed the test to go into the deep end. I even got one of those sweet, stretchy anklets that signify my deep end baller status. Anyway, I really had to pee, like really bad, bad enough that I achieved a prepubescent pee-rection. I ran as fast as I could toward the restrooms that were at the end of the pool near the deep end. I made it to the urinal, but it was too tall for me, and there were no kitty ones. So I hopped over my tippy toes and whipped it out, but since I was at full mast and angled slightly backward, the stream went right into my eye. Like, wow. A sure shot right to the iris. And I couldn't very well correct my trajectory due to the circumstances at hand, so I pulled my bathing suit back on, continued to pee my pants, and ran straight into the deep end, opening and closing my eyes to get the pee out. Well, to be fair, he didn't really make a mistake in that sense. That was just dumb, terrible luck. Yeah. But... I've, never had, I've never had a pee erection. Like, I mean, I, I've had erections, obviously, but I've never had one from having to pee. Is that I have. Thing? I feel his agony. <laughs> I, 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 I could imagine that would suck. Number 23, I was constipated for a week once, so at work I ate a whole box of Fiber One bars and... Oh, God. And no. drank a large hot coffee. I went seven no. or eight times before lunch. One was no. pure black, and I swear to God, had veins. No! <laughs> no. I know what's happening! I know what's going to happen! I had developed a belly over the course of that week from the build-up, so my skin felt loose for a while afterwards. Also, I could not stop farting even after the going ended. 
One was so bad I actually vomited from the smell. Also, have you ever smoked a cigarette and then blown the smoke through a napkin to see the tar? Well, that's what my pants look like after farting for ten hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't laughed this hard in a couple of days, man. <laughs> Poop with... Wait, I gotta send that to Andrew as a, a song title for Zombie Sneak Attack. Song title. A turd with veins. <laughs> God damn it, number 24. This is short and to the point. One time when I had a stomach flu, I thought I only had it to fart. Yes, I know. I feel his agony. Well, we've all been there, though, right? The, especially lately for me. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, that's, that's, that's a shame. Number 25, a couple of years ago, I sat down to relieve myself. Little did I know that somehow, and don't ask me how because I just don't know, the tip of my penis was not aimed into the bowl. When I started to pee, I literally got it all over my shorts. I had no idea what to do at that point. That sucks. <laughs> well, if you're if you're at home, you change your shorts. If you're in public, you take them off and put them under that thing that blows the hot air, the dryer thing. Or just put them yep. in the trash can. Um, number 26. In middle school, I used to avoid peeing in school for no other reason than it was an inconvenience. Oh, yeah, and the restrooms were disgusting. Anyway, I was also on the track team. One day at track practice, I couldn't hold it, but I was at the starting line getting ready to run. Before I started running, the urine did. I pretended I was stretching, got really close to the ground. It didn't help much. I'd pee all over my shorts. How no one found out, I'll never know. Well, at least no one found out until yeah. when posted it on Reddit or whatever. <laughs> Number 27. What do you mean I can't chew tinfoil? Of course I can. Give me a little ball. Not a good idea. Nope. Not a good idea. Something's going to happen. Some bad happened to your teeth. Number 28, I went on a first date with a girl that I've been talking online to for a while. We decided to go a movie to, to a movie together one weekend, so I met her at a theater an hour away. I let her pick whatever movie she wanted to see, so we saw Flicka, a stereotypical horse movie. You can probably guess the plot better than I can remember. Girl finds wild horse, loves it, tries to tame it, no one thinks she can, blah, blah, blah. We get inside, and there's not a single other person in the theater. The movie is pretty bad, and at one point this giant mountain lion jumps out of a tree and tries to eat Flicka himself. It just seems so random to me that this mountain lion either wanted to eat this giant-ass horse, or at least just kill him because he hated it for some off-screen reason. Also, it looks super cheesy. So I accidentally started laughing a little bit. And then the girl that I was with slowly turned toward me with a face of such disgust, such venom, that I immediately stopped all giggling, and then realized that she had tears streaming down her face at this moment, said to me in this completely empty theater loudly, How can you be laughing at a time like this?! I slowly turned my attention back to the movie, finished watching it, said goodnight, and drove back to school. I will never forget those words. Everything that about that night just seemed so ridiculous now. It was like it was destiny, that this movie was made entirely to have that ridiculous scene to, in it, so me and this girl could be in this empty theater together, and I could chuckle, and she could deliver the perfect line of, how could you be laughing at a time like this? It wasn't meant to be. It was not meant to be. Well, I'm sure he didn't get called from her again. Number 29, forgetting to wear a pad before my karate class. High kicks and white pants, plus an older kid from my neighborhood as the black belt watching over us all mix in for quite a horrible memory. Ouch. See Carrie? Yep. <laughs> and finally, number 30, I was a drum major in my college marching band. There were two of us, and I was junior, so I was assigned to conduct the band when they were playing... Uh, facing backfield. We were hosting the state band competition, biggest crowd of the year by far, all the kids from every school around. In rehearsal, I ran back across the field during a big crescendo as they were turning around, ran up the podium, and hit the downbeat just as they were hitting the big note at the top of the phrase. Pretty awesome. Except it rained the night before the performance, and marching band shoes are flat-soled, no tread at all, and the uniform was all white. I started running, crossing the field, slipping just a little, and I couldn't stop. Wiped out completely, slipped right off into the metal podium, climbed up, finished the song, slumped to the ground, killed the applause as the crowd was wondering if I was dead, which would have been better. Epilogue, the next morning at the doctor's office, the nurse asked, how did you get hurt? I told her, slipped while running on wet grass. She says, oh my God, you're the drum major from X State. <laughs> oh man, they... <laughs> his reputation precedes him. Uh, Out of, uh... I, I know drum major pain too. 
at, at, just... out of out of thirty, I'm gonna say these are entertaining. Uh, I'm gonna say twenty five. What, what do you say? I'll say I'll say twenty six. That last one really did the number for me. <laughs> I think it did it for you more than me because I'm just like uh, okay, and, but you you seem to know what he's talking about more. Drum major, senior year of high school. Yeah. There you go. All right. Um, okay, I got a video game related list here. Yes. It's from Screen Rant, it is the sixteen lamest characters for Mortal Kombat. Yes. Now. Let's, uh, who we, I haven't looked at this, who would you guess they would pick as the lamest Mortal Kombat character ever? Smoke. Smoke? What? How is Smoke lame? Just Smoke. Okay. All right, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that it, it's, it's gonna be, like, one of those really generic characters like Cobra. I, I think it's because Smoke came in when there's already, like, five ninjas already. And it's just like, how many more of these bastards do we need? Well, uh, everybody liked the ninjas, so it worked. But let's see, number 16 is Kentaro. Kentaro's not lame. What? How is Kentaro lame? Kentaro's awesome. I like Kentaro. All right. So this list has lost a lot of credibility right off the bat. That's number uh, Number 15 is Dairu. Dairu's pretty generic i guess he's just you know hey i'm some dude who does kung fu yeah there, we got enough of those as it is i mean there, he didn't have an interesting design there wasn't like an interesting story there so uh number 14 is shujinko all right i don't think shujinko's lame as a character but when you you get into his story and everything like if you just watch the first scene in story mode of deception it's like so obvious that this you know, voice talking to him is evil and that he's a big idiot for doing anything it says. So, yeah. Cool. Oh, number 13 is Cobra. See, I thought he would be number one. <laughs> Maybe like, that's... We'll just, what... we'll just take Ken from Street Fighter and make him into a Mortal Kombat character. No one will notice. Uh, number 12 is Taven. He's also... Yeah, they're getting a lot of the generic ones. Number 11 is Kai. He's very generic as well. Yeah. Most people barely remember Kai. Uh, number 10, Dagon. Yep. Uh, number 9 is Chameleon with a K, the the one that was only on the Nintendo consoles. Maybe that's who I was thinking about. Um, number 8 is Blaze. You know, Blaze is funny because they're like, what if we took the guy that was on fire in the back of the pit in Mortal Kombat 2 and made him into a character in, you know, Part 5? And that was pretty cool, but then, you know, Armageddon comes along, and they're like, let's make him the final boss. And like, it's like, really? You're going to take this generic character from Part 5 that was based on a background character from Part 2 and make him the final boss of the entire series? Are you an ass? That was quite ass of nine, if you catch my drift. <laughs> <laughs> Ass-related. Number seven is Reiko. I actually liked Reiko, so... I had a problem yes. with Reiko. He was quick... Uh, number six is Jarek. The problem with Jarek is it was so obvious that he was supposed to be Kano and that they changed it to some other dude for some reason. Like, he even had an eye laser fatality. Even Gee. though he doesn't have... There's no reason that you would think this guy has eye lasers. He just does. Number five is Meat. Meat is not even really a Mortal Kombat character. He's just like a like a... Like a... Easter egg. As long as the uh, the horror icons aren't on there, because uh, no. I mean they got no place on this. <laughs> they're just no, no. there. Yeah, well, no, I, yeah, well, they're not really Mortal Kombat characters. They're just guests in the series, you know. Yeah. Uh, number four is the Armageddon version of Motaro. Um, yeah, they made up some some like because they you got to play as Motaro and but he wasn't a centaur. He he had two legs instead of four, and they made up this lame excuse of he was cursed or some shit but it was really because they didn't want to bother programming him properly so i remember i remember playing that game with my dad mortal kombat trilogy on playstation he would always choose that asshole because uh, all, all it took was four hits and you were dead i wouldn't want to play as motaro in trilogy because he had like the lamest fatalities though well he didn't know how to execute fatalities but neither did i so oh well, there you go <laughs> Uh, number three is Stryker. Yeah, Stryker sucks. I mean, first of all, nobody wants to play as a cop. 
And secondly, what, what with your backwards baseball cap? What the fuck, man? How 90s can you get? Uh, Blue Bloods with uh, Donnie Wahlberg. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Number two is Suhao. What? Su Suhao is so lame that I think Ed Boon has promised to never even mention his name again. I forgot about him. So who's number one? Let's see. Number one is, Mo oh, of course, MoCap. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, to be fair, MoCap was put in there as a joke, but yeah, it's not a funny joke. I'm saying seven. <laughs> um, I'm going to say six on this one. I'm going to say six. I don't necessarily agree with some of it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I had a really interesting list here. Where is it? Okay, now this is a little bit like that I've made a huge mistake list, but I haven't read any. I, okay, earlier I brought this up and I read the first thing on here, and then I was like, I, ah, this is good. i got to save this for list critics. All right, I'm listening. Fifteen people describe the one thing they instantly regretted eating. Have you ever eat something or at least put it in your mouth and you just immediately regretted it? Yeah. And what, 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 what was it? Sauerkraut. Ugh, I don't like sauerkraut. If you want to see, like, that and mushrooms. And mushrooms I found out in the I, worst way possible. I detest mushrooms. Like, I, I, just got, I just got curious one day and I bought a, like, a mushroom burger at Jack in the Box. I was at work eating it. Ugh. Next thing you know, I'm on the ground. I'm, see, I'm turning blue in the face because apparently my esophagus had shut shut. Oh, you're allergic. Yeah. Oh, wow. And one ER visit later, a uh, an adrenaline shot, Good and work. I was home the next day. But did you enjoy the mushrooms? I actually did. Oh, so see, it would have been better if you didn't, because that way you would have no no reason to ever want to try that shit again. Yeah, but it was a good burger. But one hour later, I'm in the ER. Well, here's the first one. Um, I went on this cultural exchange program to work in an American restaurant for the summer. One day I came to work early and see all my compadres gather around the counter. On it there was a plate of the most tender chicken crisps ever. I didn't have a chance to grab breakfast, so the hunger just hit me. I was so distracted that I didn't even notice that they were overly enthusiastic for me to take some chicken and dip it into the amazing golden sauce next to it. Being European, I wasn't really familiar with the thousands of sauces that you could have. The sauce in question was made from ghost peppers. Oh! <laughs> I took a piece of chicken, drenched it fully in the sauce, not even two seconds pass, and I feel this burning pain hitting my brain. Then everybody looks at me laughing and asks if I'm okay. I felt that my lips were melting, and someone was trying to nail them back to my face with a thousand hammer hits per second. I don't really remember what happened next. Wingstop got me with that. Oh, they got you with, like, some really fucked up wings? The ghost, pe the ghost pepper wing, I had never heard of it at the time. And I frequent this place all the time. I mean, I've had the habanero, and I can devour that no problem. Habanero is pretty interesting, yeah. But then they said, hey, try out this new ghost wing, this ghost pepper wing we got. And they said, we're going to give you one free sample and see if you want to try it. Took one thing. I made 18 trips, 18 or 20 trips to the uh, soda fountain. You drank soda? No, no, no. This was like years ago. No, I mean, th that's what you use to cool your mouth down? That was all they had. It was either that or beer, and I was too young for that. Oh, milk. Ice cream. That's what you want. And neither were close by. Anything, anything dairy. They didn't have a piece of cheese for you to bite into? Nope. Shit. All they got is chicken and fries, and that's it. The fries might have worked. Well, no, the salt would have made it worse. All right, um... Next one. I just got back home after running some errands and was thirsty like hell. I just opened the refrigerator and gulped down what I thought was cold water until I found out it was white distilled vinegar. <laughs> oh, the sharp, strong, pungent flavor caused me to throw up. Within a few minutes, my stomach started burning, and for the next couple of days, I suffered from indigestion. The very thought of it again makes me cringe. Can't say I blame him for that. Yikes. You know, he's got to have some, some, some fortitude to be able to even swallow vinegar like that, though. He must have really gulped it down without thinking. 
Yeah. Uh, next one, extra crispy chicken covered with Colonel Sanders' secret 11 herbs and spices, breading with just the right amount of crispiness. Inside, the chicken is moist and slightly spicy. It's finger-licking good. Just thinking about it makes my mouth water until I have my first bite. I am then reminded of the thick layer of fat under the crispy skin and the oily breading and the greasy aftertaste, followed by regret of buying six pieces of chicken just because it's a great deal. Unfortunately, I have short-term memory. Every six months or so, I will be craving it again and regret it again. Side note, I guess I now know I will be having for lunch today. <laughs> I like KFC every once in a while. I guess this person really doesn't like it, but is somehow still addicted to it. Sounds like me when I was addicted to eating nothing but McDonald's food. Oh. And now it's like I don't even eat the shit anymore. And if I do, it's chicken nuggets, and that's it. That's rough. You know, it, almost every time that I've gone by McDonald's uh, in the past few months, I've been just to get a fucking coffee. No, well, you can't can't complain about the coffee. I mean, the that's what I usually get. Coffee there is really good. Uh, next one. Um, they were on. I, I love the little bomb. Okay. Oh, no, 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 okay. They were on sale for Easter at the grocery store, so I grabbed a few to enjoy. What? What was? Got home. Was excited to enjoy my little treat. Absentmindedly, I dug in. But what was that taste? It tasted like artificial flowers, and it permeated my entire respiratory system. But I wasn't going to let that ruin my moment, so I soldiered on, trying not to think about it. I was almost finished with the. I was talking about Cadbury eggs. I was almost finished with the egg when I realized that during checkout, my eggs had been placed in the same bag as my boyfriend's fabric softener sheets, and the strong fragrance had diffused directly into the chocolate. <laughs> Gross! Forgot about it the next day and kept one of the eggs in my bag for the next few weeks, waiting for the moment where I needed to indulge myself again. Yesterday, Aunt Flo was here, and I bloated and cramping. I felt I deserved it. Bit into it, and there was the fragrance again. Ah, look, I had forgotten. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Okay. <laughs> All right, I've, got that Bugs, I've got that Bugs Bunny laugh going on right now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Ain't I a stinker? Disclaimer, this was definitely not my proudest or most intellectual moment. I was at my college apartment. One of my roommates had his family up for the day. His parents often bought us stuff for the apartment, cleaning supplies, food, decorations, etc. They'd left the apartment, and I was there alone. I saw a sandwich bag full of little round yellow colored balls. Logically thinking, of course, I figured his family brought us a bag of candy. I have a weak spot for candy. So... I oh this I know where this is going. I put one in my mouth expecting a sweet or sour taste. What I got instead was immediate gagging and the taste of what I could only imagine to be poison. What I found out what it was later that day, garbage disposal cleaner and deodorizer. Oh, oh. Bad news. Oh. Wow, that that's regret right there, huh? Alright, um I was, more I was I was probably nine. My mother had asked me to go to the full-size freezer in the basement and fetch some meat. When I opened the freezer, I was greeted with a tub of Cool Whip, a.k.a. Poor Man's Whipped Cream. So, with an impish smile, I opened it up, scooped a big chunk out with my finger, and prepared to pop it in my mouth. As I scooped it out, both the texture of it and the color had me struck as unusual, a little too greasy and not quite snow white enough. <coughs> I had dismissed the warning signs, climbed the first step, and popped it in my mouth, intending to finish it quickly before I entered the kitchen. Then it hit me. This was the vilest, nastiest, greasiest Cool Whip I had ever tasted. I screamed. When my mother realized what I had done, she nearly cried with laughter. She said the butcher had used old Cool Whip containers to store the lard from the pig we bought. Children don't, uh. <laughs> Children don't ever eat frozen lard. That's, that's pretty fucking nasty. And it looks the same, too. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. When I was a kid, I used to really like chocolate sprinkles. Every time my mom brought me to the grocery store, the first thing on my list was chocolate sprinkles. I would eat them with or without bread when I was chilling at home or on my way to school. One day I was playing hide-and-seek with my sister. I was hiding behind my parents' bedroom door. I noticed something that looked like a chocolate sprinkle. Oh, no, he's about to eat a mouse turd, isn't he? I think so. <sighs> only somewhat bigger in size. I didn't even think twice and took a bite. Turns out it wasn't a delicious chocolate sprinkle that I love so much. It was from one of the things that I hated most. Oh, it's even worse. It was a cockroach's egg. Ew! Oh, man. You know what? That probably ruined chocolate sprinkles for that guy for the rest of his life. Probably. All right. I'm allergic and I to... I guarantee the donut shop got closed after that, too. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm allergic to crab. I live on the East Coast, and crabs are our state food, and hiding them in things seems to be our state sport. Others claim it is jousting, but I never see jousting outside the Renaissance Festival, whereas restaurants hide crab and food all the time. Waiters seem to be incredibly coy about telling you it is there. Our special today is a cold fruit soup. What's in it? Watermelon, tomato, red pepper, garlic, shallot, and celery. Wow, this is really good. Wait, is this crab at the bottom? Waiter gasps and looks ashen. Are you allergic? It's just a garnish. A garnish that was in my food that I was eating. What's in the beef wellington? Mushrooms, spinach, beef jus, and all sorts of good things. After taking a few bites, hey, is this crab in the filling? Crab is not a traditional filling for beef wellington. Huh. Neither is mushrooms, but I digress. You would typically uh, use I'll, liver for that. I'll take. Well, either way, I'll take the crab over the mushroom. <laughs> well, I like crab. What no more in the yet. bloody hell made me think this would ever be a good idea? I've had green smoothies before, so I figured wheatgrass couldn't be all that different, right? Wrong. It tastes exactly like, wait for it, grass. Shocker. And when I say grass, I mean the kind your dad made you mow every other Saturday afternoon when you were growing up. Never and never and never again. Well, I mean, it's right there in the name. Grass, wheatgrass, I mean. What, what's there to screw up about? You kind of brought that to yourself. When I was 12 years old, I was left at home alone for the first time. I was really excited, and so I did all the normal kid things. Played video games, used the swing set, ran around in my pajamas. It was great. But then I got hungry, and I hadn't planned for this. I went to the kitchen only to find the fridge was empty. My parents had left $25, but I wanted to pocket it, so I searched through the cupboard until I found something that looked palatable. A bag of white chocolate chips. I had never had white chocolate, but I figured that it would be similar to milk chocolate, so I happily ate the entire bag. Oh, Instant. God. Instant regret. I was sick for all the next day and didn't eat white chocolate for the next 10 years. Yeah? That's too much white chocolate, man. You know those Oreo cookies that are dipped in white chocolate? Oh, that must be interesting. Uh, yeah, same thing happened to me the last time I did that. You just went a little overboard? Went overboard, ate the whole thing, and wow. took two days off school. Yeah, that'll do it. I was visiting Japan, and my friends all had their own something that they wanted me to buy for them. The most requested item was green tea Kit Kats, but strangely the Kit Kats were nowhere to be found, because they probably have like 5 million different types of Kit Kats in Japan. It's insane. They do. It's crazy. During my last day in Japan, I found a box in a small shop in the underground arcades of Shujinku Station. It was a green-colored Kit Kat. I immediately bought it, but since it was only one, I guess I should just keep it for myself. It must be so delicious. Why else would anyone else rave about it? As soon as I arrived and unpacked my things, me and my brother finally opened the package and began to eat it. I noticed that it smelled weird, but when I touched my tongue, I realized that it wasn't green tea Kit Kat at all. All the time, it never occurred to me that something else was also green, which the hiragana on the box clearly stated, wasabi. Oh! <laughs> Japan's fucked up, man. Horseradish-flavored Kit Kat? That ain't right. That shouldn't be a thing at all. All right. Hakarl. The innocent piece of dried fish is an Icelandic delicacy. It is made from fermented shark because the meat is otherwise poisonous. Yum. So instead of just eating something nice, like a steak or maybe even some reindeer, Icelanders have figured out how to make this toxic food edible. Joy. How do they do it? First, they cut the meat into large blocks. Then they stack them in a container. They place stones on top to create pressure on the meat. They then leave it there for two to three months with the goal of squeezing all the lovely liquid out. They then cut those chunks into strips and hang it to dry for several months. Oh, the anticipation. Finally, after a grueling half year, you can now feast on this rare Icelandic delicacy. Locals cut up the meat into small little cubes on toothpicks, presumably because they don't want to re any reusable utensils on it, lest they need to burn them. After you bring the morsel to your mouth, you're immediately hit with an intense stench that can only be mirrored by finding a kitty litter box that hasn't been changed in weeks, sticking your face into it, and taking a huge breath through your nostrils. Oh, it is very descriptive. At this point, you don't have to worry about tasting anything because you've lost all sense of smell. The texture itself is kind of like a jerky that hasn't quite been properly dried. It's somehow both tough and mushy at the same time. <laughs> Fortunately, if you've forgotten the smell of cat urine by now, each bite releases a spray of it back into the deep recesses of your nasal cavity so you can relive the eye-burning sensation. Locals drink some kind of alcohol called Brennivin that I can presume is invented only to kill your remaining taste buds and sense of smell after eating a bite of Hakarl. 
<laughs> you know, I gotta wonder if 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 you're in Iceland or whatever, checking out the local fair, and you somebody hands you a cube of meat that smells like cat piss, would you fucking eat it? Hell no, I wouldn't. I'd throw it right back in his face. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, if it smells bad, it probably don't taste too good. That sure ain't no chicken, that's for sure. One day, my family got one of those cans of every flavor jelly beans for Christmas. Right uh oh. Away, <laughs> right away, some moron said, "Let's all taste one each." I think this moron was me. There was me, my brother and sister, each with a bean in our hand. I had a brown speckled bean that I was really hoping was chocolate pudding flavor or something. So I chewed it. It was dog food. A dog food flavored jelly bean. I never wanted to vomit more in my life. That sucks. If I wanted that, I would have eaten the vomit flavored one. I spit into the trash first chance I get. There's some things you just shouldn't do to yourself. For reference, my brother got cleaning wipe flavored bean and my sister got the lemon lime flavor. Why did anyone think that cleaning wipes had a taste? Like, somebody licking cleaning wipes to find out somebody's, what it tastes somebody, like. Somebody's got too much time on their hands, basically. Definitely. During my second year of college, I developed a taste for shrimp cocktail. Someone had brought it to a friend's party, and I instantly became hooked on the stuff. It was amazing. A few days later, I went shopping and noticed they had a platter of shrimp cocktail, so I decided to buy, oh boy, supermarket shrimp. Uh-oh. As soon as I got home, I ate a whole bunch of them. The next day, I ate several more. The day after that, I ate some more. Then I kind of forgot about it. After a week later, I was digging through the fridge, and I discovered that my tray of shrimp cocktail was still in there. Uh-oh. You're supposed to get this for, like, a party, not to eat over the course of weeks. I said, I wonder if this is still okay to eat. My roommate says, I'm sure it's fine. Here, I'll eat one. She eats one, doesn't seem to suffer any ill effects, so I decided to scarf down about five of them. Oh. They tasted a little odd, but they weren't terrible. Later that day, my stomach had started feeling all gurgly, so I decided to lay down. But before long, my stomach was really hurting. The memory of those shrimp came right back to me as I puked my guts out in the bathroom. <laughs> the next two or three days were just like that, repeated over and over again. I could hardly even sleep because I was so uncomfortable. That sucks. Man, that's, that's like the white chocolate thing. That's too much of a good thing, you know? Yep. I looked at my wife-to-be day after our first date and asked if I could have some. She, oh, wait, on the table was a bowl of with soup. Then he asked if he could have some. Okay, I missed the first part there. She refused, telling me not to eat it. I persisted. She smiled and handed me the bowl and a spoon. I took a full spoon, put it in my mouth, and inferno top yum soup from hell. My wife comes from Thailand, and she eats spicy even for Thai people. I swallowed, did not want to spit it out. It burned everywhere. Sweat That's started to said. flow, and tears were running nonstop from my eyes. I returned the bowl and resolved to listen to this woman when it comes to Thai food. The next morning, that this resolve became even stronger. It's the only food I regretted eating not only once, but twice. <laughs> oh, well, it's spicy on the way out, too. Oh, yeah. Well, out of 15, I gotta say that was highly entertaining, and I will give it a 15. I'll say 14. One of them kind of like, I forgot which one it was, but it kind of went over my head. All right, which one? Oh, you don't I remember. For I forgot. I just remember I was. I just had a blank face is all. Okay. Um, let's see. Where's that list here? Uh, okay, where is it? Oh, oh, wait, I gotta go to Facebook. Okay, somebody... On Facebook, had sent me a list last time, not not last time with you, but on List Critics 2, and we did that, and he sent me something else, so let's check that out. If I could, if I can get to it, that would be great. Ah, uh, here we are, this is from Will A. Hamar Jr., and I, I had accidentally said his name, and he didn't want me to, but he said it's okay, so it's all good. Alright. So this is his, um, oh, wait, there's more than one list here. Scroll up more. Okay, this is his... Okay, now see, I, I don't know much about this, so I'm glad you're here, Payton, because this is his top ten wrestling themes. Oh, all right. I have no fucking idea on this, so I'm just going to probably defer to you on this. Here's an idea. My intro to my Let's Plays is a wrestling thing. Well, I mean, it's Motorhead, but well, they I wrote it. I guess that they're all songs, but you would know if they make good wrestling themes. You know, I don't, I don't know all that stuff. Uh, number eleven is "Car Crash" for Mankind by Mick, or Mankind slash Mick Foley. I, I don't know what the hell. Now, now, now. 
bow now. See what what makes that song so iconic is Mick Foley literally did crash his own car to make that sound effect. Oh jeez. He was a, he's uh one of the reasons why they call him the hardcore legend. That's pretty hardcore. Number 10 is uh, Slow Chemical by Finger 11 for Kane. Uh yeah, he still uses that song. Okay. Uh number 9 is uh Tajiri First Theme. I don't know who the hell that is. That's probably before my time. Well, he was or saying, it, I, I, he says that Tajiri was a racist stereotype, but holy shit, did this song kick ass. That must have been from a while ago, I guess. That must have been from the Attitude Era, because, or one of the, wait a second, wait a second, Tajiri, now I remember, now I remember, he was the Japanese wrestler that uh, wanted to cut off Val Venus's dick for always hitting on his woman. Jesus, they get into some crazy shit. Uh, number eight is, uh, it just says Kurt Angle. I know who Kurt Angle is, but. Oh, oh yeah, I know, I know that song. It's the uh, the trumpets, and there's this line that goes duh, nah, okay. duh, and the whole and the reason it's so epic is because when it's at that part, you the crowd always yells, "You suck!" <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, Baden, because Jesse wouldn't know what the hell, and I don't know what the hell Tanya would, but she's in school, so you know. Uh, number <laughs> seven, whatever by Our Lady Peace for Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit. Oh, Benoit. Is it Benoit? I did not know that. I've only yep. ever seen it written down. Yeah, and uh, uh, it's definitely iconic, but it definitely doesn't represent who he is. Well, we all know what happened, but that's not what he's in- going by. He's going by the songs. Uh, number six is Can You Dig It, Sucka, for Booker T. <laughs> yeah. I Can don't you even know it? who Booker T is. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, number four is Burn In My Light uh, by Randy Orton. Yeah. Definitely fitting, although his uh, that's his, that was his theme song when he first got there. And now he's got uh, Voices In My Head by... Uh, I forgot. <laughs> number three is One Of A Kind by Rob Van Dam. Yep, that's definitely fitting. Uh, number two, Glass Shatters uh, for Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, that's that song that Disturbed did for him. I remember that guy. He was an asshole. <laughs> At least he gave uh, Donald Trump a stunner, so... Oh, uh, well, yeah. That You know what? Now he's an American hero. Yep. He can actually <laughs> say that he wrestled a, a president. Yeah? How many people can say that? And it was on. It was at WrestleMania too when he How did many it. People can say that. There's not many. And number and he one, had beer in his hand when he did it. <laughs> number one is Metalingus by Afterbridge for Edge. Oh, <laughs> that is a fucked up song when you listen to it. Well, what do you think? Is this is this a good top? Uh, I think it was eleven top eleven list for theme songs for wrestlers. Nine out of eleven. Perfect. Nine out of eleven. All right. Oh, okay, I'll, that's. I'm that's, gonna defer to you. I, and go with a nine as well, because I have no fucking idea. Well, some of them are metal songs, and like I said, Disturbed yeah. did uh, Glass Shatters for Stone Cold, and uh, me- you got to listen to Metal Lingus. It's such a fucked up song. All righty, then. Number, okay, uh, so this is his other list. It's top ten movies that he likes that no one else does. Oh, let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> so kind of, I guess I'm imagining Guilty Pleasures. Number ten is Dead and Breakfast, which... Uh, yeah, that's a horror movie. Doesn't sound like the type of movie that I would enjoy. It's a, it's a B-type horror movie. That's the best way to put it. It actually sounds like it's a comedy. Like like it's like a one of the like like Shaun of the Dead kind of things. Yeah. All right. Number 9 is Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Oh. You're not <laughs> the only one that likes it. My my parents must have seen that like 50 million times. Uh what were those bro- uh, uh the Fine Brothers? Uh, that there was some streamer on Twitch that was streaming the number counter go down, and on the bottom he's they are uh, watching uh, uh, Kung Pao enter the fist. Oh, what the subscriber count when it was dropping like crazy? They lost. They had to have lost more, at least half their fan base. And we're talking well, twenty, no, they, thirty. Well, million they gained most of it back. I mean, they um, they were at about fourteen million, and I remember when the the whole shit went down, they got down to about thirteen point two, and then they apologized and things started to calm down a bit yep uh, i think i think they've gained it all back by now uh number eight maximum overdrive 
Yes! That movie was so bad, but it's so aware that it is bad. They knew it was, like, the only reason to watch it is because the whole soundtrack is ACDC. Oh, it yeah, makes yeah, the whole well, that's, movie. That's, that was pretty cool. The, the album, Who Knows Who, pretty much is the soundtrack to that movie. Um, yeah, you know, Stephen King directed that movie. It's the only movie he's ever directed. He was coked out of his mind while he was working on it. Yeah, he flat up, he said, uh, same thing with uh, Dreamcatcher, just about. Well, he he said, I was, on, I was on coding when I wrote that book. <laughs> no, but he actually directed Maximum Overdrive, the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he did write the story that it was based on, but he actually directed the movie, and he was he was out of his mind. There were a bunch of books, like like Cujo, he was so out of his mind that he didn't remember writing it. Lord have mercy on my, that's all I'm going to say. And Cujo was a pretty good book, so. Uh, number seven is Dogma. I actually think Dogma have has a lot of fans. I'm not one of them. I thought it was fucking stupid but i loved it you do you hey, whatever man that's cool uh number so, six is uh mortal Kombat. man i fucking love mortal Kombat. same here that was a good movie you're not alone on that one man mortal Kombat was the shit it was, it was probably considered at for the longest time the best movie based on a video game until like you know resident evil came out yeah now they're finally finishing that series thank god well they you know i didn't I, the only Resident, I didn't see the last one, but the only Resident Evil that I really didn't like was the third one. Uh, Extinction? Extinction. It was boring. But I, I liked most of them. Uh, number five, Silent Hill. No, man, I loved Silent Hill. I can't say I've seen it. I've never even played the video games, but I went and I saw the movie and I thought it was pretty fucking awesome. Uh, number four is Soul Plane. So is, is that the the movie? Is Snoop Dogg's in that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. I I think so. Uh, I, I know there was. Seen a... it. I haven't seen it. All right. Oh, he's got his story here. Like I'm not. I haven't been reading his descriptions because it's mostly just descriptions of the movies. But he actually has a dis like a little story to go with Soul Plane. I'm going to read here. The first time I saw this was at a friend's house. And all I remember is smoking so much weed that I woke up sometime later in bed with his sister. Sorry, JT. <laughs> that being said, I associate this movie with a good memory. Thank you, JT's sister. Yeah, so I somebody's... I generally like it. it is somebody's, very low... somebody's got the movie uploaded. Well, I'm sure any movie you could watch on one of the sketchy uh, Russian websites, you know. Yeah, That's how I or uh, uh, Showbox or something like that. Your watch series or whatever. Uh, number three is not another teen movie. Yeah, I love that movie. He only has one line here. So he says, I smoke a lot of marijuana, and that is how I choose to justify this. At least it was fun seeing Jackie in one more role before he passed. Jackie who? Uh, Jackie, uh, the principal from The Breakfast Club. Oh, okay. I didn't know that he was in that. All right. Yeah, that was his last film, then he died uh, two years later from uh, mesophilioma. Number two is Steel. Now, Steel was a legitimate piece of shit. So I gotta read what he says here about Steel, because that was bad. Let's see. He says, This movie actually has a special place with a lot of my family. I had a cousin who at age of 14 was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. He got to make a wish and wanted to meet Shaq. Due to filming for this movie, there was a delay. My cousin's condition took a turn for the worse and was given about 48 hours. Right after he got new the news, Shaq showed up with lots of gifts. He left the set to be with him. Shaq didn't leave his room, and he lived for 56 hours. This isn't much of a reason to watch the movie, but to point out that Shaquille O'Neal is a fantastic human being. Well, yeah, yeah. he is. The movie still sucked, though. Also, uh, one more thing. Uh, I goofed up. It was not Jackie. It was Paul. Oh, Paul, okay. Le Paul. I was thinking Jackie Gleason for some reason. Oh, that's, nope. that's going way it, back. Yeah. It's Paul Gleason. And number one is Euro Trip. I fucking loved Euro Trip, so I can't. If Tanya was here, Scotty we all, doesn't know. Yeah, we would all be singing the Scotty doesn't know song. Yeah, me, all, we, I do it too. Me, Tanya, Andrew, all, pretty much everybody at Kazarath loves this movie. All right, that settles it. If we have a movie night where, you know, maybe me and the media club will figure out a date when everybody has the day off and, like, let's just watch Eurotrip. Well, actually, you know what, Peyton? Um, often on Friday nights, and we are doing one tonight, Andrew shows movies on his live stream. 
and uh, he is a fan of Euro Trip, and I could probably convince him to show it soon. Yep. So we'll just put the word around for all the Kazarif people to come, because they, I'll see. They I'll all, see I mean, if I got a. Uh, I'll see if I got phone signal over in Williamsport, because that's where I'm heading tonight. Well, William, you know, I yeah, don't know when so. he, he he has a whole he has a whole schedule planned out for his movies and everything. He the only day the only Fridays that he doesn't do movies are when we have our meetings. Oh yeah, and then there's another one coming up like right before my birthday. Yeah. So. Um, but he, he generally doesn't, and I could probably convince him to, he makes Facebook events and everything, and um, if he does um, do um, Eurotrip, I'll try to convince him, I'll be like, hey, it's been a while since we've seen Eurotrip, because he fucking loves that movie just as much as I do and you do. And uh, I'll tell him, hey, invite the whole Kazarif team, and maybe we'll make a yeah. night of it. It's usually around yeah. 9 p.m. that we'll watch. Yeah. Um, so trying... out, of, out of 10, I gotta go, actually I'm gonna go with a pretty low score here, because... I like most of these movies. <laughs> so low or high? I'm going low because the whole point of the list is movies that he likes that no one else does. I'll go with, oh, in that case, four. I'm a, yeah, I was going to go with five, but yeah. Because I, uh, I know Dead and Breakfast. It's a I, I, I'm just it, un, I'm just unfamiliar with that. But like, some, I mean, some of these are legitimately bad, but like, I can understand why he'd have a special thing about steel and, and, you know, like the other one where he had sex with the guy's sister. But some of these are just movies that I also legitimately enjoy. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, All right. This is from suggest.com. 17 people reveal their I'm surrounded by idiots moment. Uh Oh, <laughs> Have you ever had a moment where you just realized that you're completely surrounded by morons? CR England truck driving school. <laughs> you know, it's funny that you say that because I was thinking you're a truck driver. You probably like, yeah, I was down in Birmingham, Mississippi or some shit. <laughs> uh, CR England truck driving school takes the cake, eats it, digests it, craps it out, eats it again. Oh, it oh wow. That's... Someday you'll have to tell that story. All right, well, number one, the space in your brain, the final frontier. I was at a small social at my parents' house and noticed something about the National Space Center in Leicester. A girl pipes up and says, oh, I love taking my son there. He loves it. I just find it amusing because I don't believe in space. I looked at her dumbfounded and asked if she meant she didn't believe in investing money in space exploration. No, she did not believe in space. She simply did not believe that anything existed above the sky that pictures and videos were all fake, and that all space agencies and anyone who claimed to have been to space was lying. The other girls in the group started nodding in agreement, saying things like, Now that you mention that, I've never really seen space. I just went home. Smart idea to go home before the stupid starts infecting you. Pretty much. That's pretty bad, Matt. Don't believe in space? I didn't know that there was ever a question of it. Holy crap. Wow. That, that wow. reminds me of a story, I don't know how true it is, that, that that there was this scientist speaking about, you know, like, the nature of the universe and all this, and this, this little old lady says, uh, well, this is all bullcrap because everybody knows that the, the world rests on a turtle's back. And, uh, and the guy said, the humorous her, and he says, well, what is the turtle standing on? And she just gets really mad, and she goes, it's turtles all the way down. Yeah, that's usually how it works. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Number two. Freshman year of college, I'm in a math class, and we had some random group project to do. A girl in my group informed us that she wouldn't be in the next meeting as she was going to have eye surgery. I asked why, and she said, I have genital cataracts. And I said, you mean congenital? And she gave me a confused look, and everyone backed her up that she really did mean genital and not congenital. Even after I googled it and showed everyone the difference between the two words, they proceeded to tell me how you can't believe everything you read on the internet. I was dumbfounded. Words to friggin' live by. <laughs> Genital cataracts. Like what is it, like what is that? Did your uh, your vagina got full of smoke or something? It's sealed up. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. I used to work at Walmart as a cashier. During tax-free weekend, the place was a madhouse. 
The lines were long and the customers were non-stop. That being said, I can say that at least 80% of customers would point out to me quite angrily that their total was still including the tax. For example, if their purchase was $148.67, they would wonder why the tax of $0.67 cents was on there and why it wasn't an even total like $148 even. I had to repeatedly explain that that is not what tax is. Hey. That is dumb, but I gotta ask, where in the world is there a such thing as tax-free weekend? Well, I know down in Texas they do that during, like, like right before school. That way, uh, really? you know... Yeah, parents don't, uh, you know, parents will wait till then because they got to buy a shit ton of yeah, school all the supplies. Yeah, supplies and clothes and shit. Yeah, and but they I, do I, it when... I, I, we don't have it up here. Wow. Never heard of that. Uh, mm. Number four, I used to work on the Brooklyn Bridge as an iron worker. One day some poor soul was standing toward the edge and was contemplating jumping. I told my foreman, and he called the police. At about this time, all the trades on the bridge started to gather and watch this man. Maybe five minutes go by and someone starts a jump chant. Oh, that's terrible. This dude was going to kill himself, and now he has about 40 people egging him on. He jumped. Quit my job and moved across the country. Fuck those fucking fucks. I agree. What the fuck is that? You know, I can't help but think, like, Howard Stern once talked a guy out of jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge, and these fuckers are yelling, jump, jump, jump. Right. <laughs> I remember that I remember that uh, show. It's actually uh, played on Sternthology uh, a couple weeks ago, actually. Uh, oh, okay. Um, number five, I was a TA in high school for a regular high school. For a regular high school, I think it was world history class. So not honors, not academically enriched, but not quite eating your own feces either. Anyway, get to class and the power is out, so of course everyone is going nuts because it's dark, I guess. So the teacher still wants to lecture and the kids all groan. That is until one yells out, "Let's watch TV!" Yay! Everyone starts chanting, TV, TV, TV. I'll never forget the teacher's face as he looked at me. His eyes filled with disappointment about the future of our country. Unable to realize that no electricity also meant no television. Sad. Oh, God. Hell, if anything, I'd, I'd say let's go outside and play on the playground or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like, TV? I mean, come on, man. Let's go outside and, uh, like, do some experiments or something. Like, that's what we used to do. We uh, One of the coolest things we ever did was we had a pressure machine, and we would make bottle rockets, like, literal bottle rockets with them using water and pressure. Well, I think that's more of a science class thing. But still, like, I mean, TV, though, really? Like, how, do, how are they that stupid? Wow. I, I, I don't know, dude. But, I mean, that's what we would do, and that was a lot. Like, hell, I'll take that over TV any day of the week. That does sound fun. Number six, uh, yearly a local restaurant offers a meal for the price of a dollar for their anniversary. They offer a fried chicken with sides or meatloaf with sides. Decided to go only to find a line stretching around the block. Uh -oh. Hop in line, waited an hour and a half before I was pretty close. Employee walks out to say, sorry, we ran out of chicken, we only have meatloaf. The shit show that erupted after that was astounding. One lady in particular, I remember for the amazing quote, that's fucking bullshit, me and my dog have been... Almost two hours on this line, and we both wanted chicken. She knows that her dog wants chicken? I would think that the dog would want the meatloaf. <laughs> Further up, I hear a bigger commotion. Apparently, one guy got upset about there being no chicken. His friend tried to calm him down. Someone else in line made a comment, and an all-out brawl ensues. Line oh, my scatters. God. Two cops nearby subdue the situation to the best of their ability. Restaurant shuts down for the day. No longer does $1 anniversary special. That was a nice thing for a while. I miss one dollar fried chicken day. And that's nice why we job. can't have nice things. That sucks right there. That really does. That, that's pretty fucking crazy. Uh, number seven, first day of college, girl raises her hand and asks why there are two Pacific Oceans on the map. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's amazing. And she's, and she's going to college. College, man. Now, if it was junior high, I I may understand that a little bit. I, even but, junior high is stretching it a little bit, but yeah, it, college is entirely too late to be that fucking stupid. Exactly. I mean, who did she blow to get in enroll? The dean. They shot a porno right there in the office. Probably. I think I've seen that. Number eight. <laughs> I, I, I was hanging around. You know those like casting couch things. That they... uh, number eight. I was hanging around with my friends. <coughs> One of my friends had just gotten his very own moped. He needed to fill up, so they went 
to the Jerry to get the Jerry can with petrol in it. This must be in the UK. We're in the middle of an apartment building complex at the patio. My other friend wanted to see how much petrol there was, so he used his lighter to help him see. I immediately said, stop that, it will catch fire. He did not believe me, so they decided to test it by pouring the petrol on the ground and try to lighting up. The person who was pouring the petrol scared and jumped once the petrol caught on fire and dropped the jerry can. The rest of it splashed to the ground and formed a 10 meter tall fire spiral. It's like that if scene any, in, if there's, in if there's any more, If there's any survivors out of that, which I'm sure there is because somebody told the story. Yeah. Yeah. Get seek therapy, please. That was that very was... close to being a Darwin Award right there. Number nine. Geography Kid asks South, South African teacher what part of Afrikaans she's from. Guy yells, you idiot, she's not from Afrikaans, she speaks English. <sighs> oh, boy. Number 10. The morning after the EU referendum in the UK. People around me in work. So, we're leaving Europe. Does this mean there will be eight continents now? What? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, man. Please don't tell me California's going to do that if they go through with it. Uh, I'm sca I was scared when something like that was going to happen. That ain't going uh, to happen. That ain't going to happen. It won't. Well, then hold again, wait, hold on. Let's let's not say that, okay? Because we, we, we would all say Donald Trump will never be president. Anything can happen. So, let's... yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I would dismiss things like that as being too stupid to happen, but... 2016 has proved that the world is a lot dumber than we thought it was. Well, at least the Cubs won the World Series. I'll give it that. Even that is just bizarre, though. Yeah. That, that is bizarre. really like a sign of the apocalypse or something. I mean, call fucking Magneto. All right, number 11. Grew up in the UK and moved to the US and had the following conversation. What language do you speak where you come from? English. No, I mean, what actual language did you speak as you grew up? I grew English. up in England, and they speak English there. Mm. You don't understand. We speak English in America. What language did you speak before moving here? Bye. <laughs> That's a smart thing to just opt out of that conversation completely at that point. Pretty much. Number 12 was on a job site, and we had to pump out a dam to do some maintenance on some pipe work. Supervisor gets a pump organized. It gets dropped off, and we're good to go. So the guys get all the poly line in place, fire up the pump, and no water moving. Supervisor declares the pump to be a piece of shit. I ask if anyone primed it. I get a blank look. After explaining to him that it would need to be primed, he decides to humor me. I tip a bucket of water in the wet end, and another, and another. This thing is not filling up. I inquired as to whether or not there was a gate valve fitted to the intake pipe. More blank looks. And this time they refused to believe anything more I said. They ran that pump for a good three hours, expecting it to build pressure somehow. I sat in the truck and smoked cigarettes while they proceeded to burn out the wet end of a very expensive pump. Biggest bunch of fucking idiots I ever had to work with. Pretty much. But the one guy there who knows what he's doing, and we're like, you're stupid. Watch All right, number learn. 13. I once had three co-workers agree that I was a sucker for taking overtime that amounted to, before taxes, almost doubling my income on a given day because of time and a half for three and to five hours because they take it all back in taxes. I tried to clarify, and no, they believed it all got taken back in taxes. Like, three grown men believe that if I work for four extra hours a day at $18 an hour on top of the 10 at $12 an hour, or however, however the math worked, my year-end income would stay the same because taxes. Yeah, that's, that's not how it works. I hate to say it, but it's, that's not how it works. I mean, yeah, you get taxed harder, but you still get something. Yeah, I mean, it might pop you into a higher bracket, but you're still making more money. Number 14, I had to explain that Halloween, in fact, can never be on Friday the 13th. If a blue moon happens on Friday the 13th and all, all the planets align, you can explain that joke. <laughs> no, wait, 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 I goofed it up, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you did, but we, I knew what you were getting at. Number 15, I once had an argument that rain was new water bestowed to... <laughs> bestowed to us by the earth. My friend truly believed that water did not recycle and that consuming it meant that it never saw the earth again. 
also believed that anything flushed down a toilet or drained was burned and evaporated into nothingness. What? It takes a special kind of stupid to think that. Yeah. Well, oh wait, there's two more. I thought that was the last one. I, there's 17 of these. 16. Some people in my class thought the Boston Tea Party and the attack on Pearl Harbor was the same thing. That's like a 200... No, wait. 150-year difference. Not only that, but Pearl Harbor is in Hawaii. Boston, in Boston is in Massachusetts. Yeah. They're pretty fucking far from each other. Yeah. Wow. And number 17. A girl I once knew asked why anyone would donate blood. She said that you only got a certain amount for your entire life. <laughs> and giving it away didn't make sense. Oh. You know, somebody <laughs> should take all of her blood because she don't deserve to live after saying something that fucking stupid. What the fuck, man? If it, she needs to donate six pints of blood. She needs to donate all of it. No, what I'm saying is the body can live after five pints have been drained completely. But after that, you have no chance. You can live after that, but it, it, it's not going to be a good life. Yeah. You're I'd... probably going to have severe brain damage. Um, wow. I mean, <laughs> Jesus fucking yep. Christ. Well, on a scale from 1 to 17, how smart do you feel right now, Peyton? Uh, to quote... One of my favorite shows of all time, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Ed, on a scale of 1 to 10, or in this case, 17, I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, uh, translate that to a number. 17! <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm going to agree. That was crazy. Um, normally, we try to do a few more lists, but Peyton uh, has to go, so we're going to stop here. On my way to Williamsport, PA, hauling 48,000 pounds of Miller beer. <laughs> Williamsport, huh? Yeah, it's uh, it's in the southern part of uh, PA, so... Uh, yeah, I was, I was just looking it up to see if that's anywhere near me. It is not. What about Scranton, PA? Because I'm almost certain that'll be my next stop after that. Scranton's about an hour and a half away from me. Next time I'm there, there's a Petro right there. Uh, I'll pay for the gas next time, man. we got to get some... Uh, they got this really cool sandwich shop. Oh, man, I, 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 you know, I ain't driving out to fucking Scranton. No. <laughs> All I, right, I'll I, keep the, that in the mind. The highway that you have to take to go out there is filled with angry cops. I believe it. There's a lot of them. And, and they all want to give you a ticket for something. Yeah, I believe it. So, that's where I got my first, that's where I got my first ticket actually was at the, uh. It was on, it was on 81? It was on 81, yeah. It was at one I of the rest of the I'm telling you, man, they are out for blood on 81. They pulled me in. They gave me a level 5 inspection, which means they're talking trailer. They're checking... Oh, which uh, means you're sitting there for at least a half hour. Yeah. They didn't even bother weighing me. It was just a uh, sc it was a scale house with no scale. And they're like, all right, we're going to give you a level 5 inspection. Pull out your logbook and pull out your, uh, your permits. Damn it. They got me for not having a... Uh, for not having a... Fuses in my truck. Man, Spare fuses. That, that is, they, 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 you know what it is? Is that they're very <laughs> bored. I believe it. They are very bored. They got nothing better to do. It was only a fifty dollar ticket, but shit, man, that was that was fifty bucks out of my pocket. Yeah, I I could imagine. You know, all right. Well, um, I hope you guys enjoy the list critics. We'll see you guys later in the month for the list critics too, and of course, um. Next month, we have the end of your special. Ooh. So there will only be one show in December, but it's going to be me and Peyton and Jesse, and we're going to we're gonna try and make it like a nice long four-hour show, and we're going to also try to get Tanya there. Hopefully I'll have that day off. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we'll schedule it on a day that we are all available to do that. I mean, Sounds good to me. Cause, because there's only one show in the month, there's no pressure to do it at any particular time of the month it could be later or whatever like i usually put them up around christmas time so right that sounds good yeah i should be i won't be home for christmas but i will be home for thanksgiving and i'll be home for my birthday after that i'm going to be out for three weeks they said oh well there you go all so. right well we'll see you guys next time
And the favorite word of the day, Shemepin. <laughs>